What's up? I'm Troubleshoot, and welcome back to another video. In this quick one, I'll be showing you how to optimize Pal World for the best possible performance while still keeping it looking as good as possible. This video is only going to cover the in game options, so if you'd like to get even more performance out of your system, make sure to check the description down below for a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides, as well as anything else that may help you out. So, without further ado, let's hop straight into game. Before we start with the optimization, let's quickly get a baseline for what kind of performance we get in game. My my graphic settings have defaulted to epic, so we'll see the kind of performance. Just a quick note, I have disabled DLSS so we can get some true to life performance numbers. I'll create a new world, leave multiplayer on, and leave everything else as is. And in the top left you can see a performance overlay. As far as I know there isn't an FPS counter in the game, however using the Steam overlay with shift tab, you can enable the FPS counter in the extreme top left like I have it, or you can use a third party program such as MSI Afterburner and River Tuner to get a more detailed graph. Outside here we're setting at a solid 90-ish 100 FPS looking to places with less going on and looking out into the world we're sitting at a solid 88 maybe a bit lower. At the box performance is pretty good especially for really modern hardware but on much lower end systems you could really be struggling and that's where this video shines. So without further ado let's start. I'll pause the game head into options followed by graphics and in here we can start customizing. Presets you can leave set to whatever you want really as we'll be customizing it further down below. Screen mode should definitely be set to full screen and it should match your display's resolution here as well. Anything lower and it'll be needlessly blurry, anything higher and you'll be pushing pixels you don't actually see. Max FPS leave at no limit and turn off VSync. Let's just quickly double check our settings. Yep, FPS hasn't changed much at all, meaning VSync wasn't limiting us. We're still at 82-ish FPS. So, VSync off, motion blur you can turn off. It shouldn't have too much of a performance impact, but for a lot of people having motion blur on can lead to motion sickness and things like that. Anti-aliasing, this is quite an interesting one. TSR has the biggest impact on FPS, but it does improve the game's look quite a bit. TAA may make it look slightly blurry and FXAA is the best option if you want anti-aliasing. For performance, it's really good and for quality, it's okay. The next option down is none and should give you the best performance, but you'll be dealing with some jagged edges and things like that. If you don't like the way that edges look, FXAA is pretty good. TAA is even better. There's less grass shimmering and stuff like that. And finally, TSR comes with a much bigger performance impact but it makes the game look a lot better overall. So if you can handle jagged edges none is a good option otherwise FXAA though you can notice grass is a little bit shimmery. Ultimately this is your preference but personally the grass shimmer is a bit too much for me. I'll be using TAA here at the lowest but of course if you need more performance don't be afraid to push this down. View distance I'd recommend leaving it epic or high as it'll let you see the most while you're in game but of course on lower end systems this is something you're gonna need to drop. Though if you're comfortable above your FPS goal, you should definitely return here and raise your view distance later on for a much better experience. Grass detail, you can comfortably push down to medium or low without too much change to how the game looks as you can see here. If we head back to FXAA, the grass shimmer is still there but there's noticeably less grass. Having grass detail raised up, there's more of it, so noticeably more shimmering. If you're going to be using FXAA, I'd recommend grass details as low as possible, but usually medium is fine. Then shadows. This usually has a huge performance impact. This is what the game looks like with epic shadows. Then high, medium, and finally low. Low seems to turn off shadows mostly, if not entirely, and we've moved up to around 110 FPS. If we have it set to medium, a lot of shadows return and we drop about 10 FPS down to 100. Cranking it from medium all the way up to epic, we lose 20 FPS, so it seems to be about a 10% performance impact for each step you go up. Therefore, I'd recommend having this as low as possible. If you're really struggling for FPS, medium is probably the lowest you'll want to go without removing shadows entirely. Then, effect quality. Throughout normal gameplay, this won't have too much of an effect, but pay attention to the particles and smoke in the background. Sitting at 97, we'll drop effects to low, and not much has changed at all, really. We've gone from 97 to 107, so we've gained 10 FPS, and things still look pretty good. The only place you'll really notice this usually is combat and things like that, as well as maybe a few other specific areas. Most of the time you can have this option much lower for a relatively good performance impact. 
So medium is a pretty good place to leave this, especially if you're dropping FPS. Combat. Then texture quality. This totally depends on how much VRAM your graphics card has. If you have anywhere around 3 gigs of VRAM, set this down to low. 4 gigs, medium. 6 gigs, high. And anything more than 6 gigs of VRAM, set it up to epic. You're not really going to lose any FPS or gain anything, except for when the game's trying to use too much VRAM that you don't have available. So having this option set too low won't gain you anything. Having it set too high will cost you FPS, though you'll definitely notice when you're running out of VRAM as the game will start to hitch, stutter, etc. Then DLSS. This is a great option for a ton of extra free performance. As it is an AI upscaler, you may notice a degradation in quality in some areas, but improvements in others. For example, we're setting at 104. If we set DLSS to performance, you'll notice a big improvement in numbers. We're setting at 120 FPS, though everything is super blurry. This isn't good at all. However, pushing it all the way to the right to quality, things are noticeably less blurry and more true to native, though we definitely are losing a bit of quality. That being said, we're setting at a solid 120 FPS, so we've actually moved up quite a bit in terms of performance. I think it may be maxed out at 120. There may be some kind of hard limit, something to do with my monitor, etc. But usually the more to the performance side you push DLSS, the better the performance you'll get, though you'll notice more weird visual artifacts, blur, and things like that too. Just a quick note, you won't actually have the DLSS option here unless you own the game on Steam as the Xbox Game Pass version doesn't have this built in, as far as I understand. If you don't have DLSS available, the other performance options here should be more than enough to help you anyways. Also, when you enable DLSS, as this smooths out edges and things like that, it'll disable anti-aliasing completely, meaning you also save a bit of performance from this as well. Personally, I'll be leaving this on off, as the game's performing more than well enough without the extra help of DLSS. Then finally, field of view. While this does technically affect your FPS, so for example, 70 gives us around 104, and 90 gives us around 110. It shouldn't have gone up, it should have gone down technically, but anyways, when it comes to field of view, it's all about your preference and how you feel when you play the game. Don't let numbers change what you feel, rather play with something that's more comfortable than what's better for your system. That's it. We've gone through all of the graphics options here. The only other thing you may want to change is camera shake. Once again, if you suffer from motion sickness, motion blur, and camera shake are the two options you want to disable completely. As for the other graphics tabs, there's nothing here that will really help us gain performance, and we've optimized the game to its maximum potential. So if you'd like to optimize your game even further, make sure to check the description down below for Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your system. Thank you for watching, my name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!